kind of hot. We're walking to class right now. And this morning it was all cold. So I didn't think I would need to worry about being too hot. I'm also trying to avoid using Filmic Pro. So I'm still using the back facing camera. So I can do this. But it's hard to tell if I'm in the shot this way. How long do you think before what I'm doing right now makes enough money that I can just hire a camera person to follow me every day, all day? Do you think Charles Tribby makes enough that he could hire a cameraman? Yes, I definitely think Charles Tribby makes enough that he could hire Charles a Charles Tribby should hire a cameraman. So we're looking at uh, different kinds of printing techniques. One's called discharge, is that right? Yes. And the other is? Um, HSA is the other method we use. Um, HSA, which has an undercoat and then the white goes on top of that, so correct. it's yeah. brighter? Right, makes it more opaque. Um, if you're printing white on black with one layer, you know, the shirt can show through. Mm -hmm. But this discharge ink actually bonds with the fabric at like a molecular level and is kind of, kind of re-dyes the fabric basically. Mm -hmm. um, so when you wash it, you won't really be able to feel the ink on top of the shirt anymore. It'll kind of just have the same, uh, same hand as the fabric of the shirt. Um, it also, you know, over time it won't crack like a plastic saw print will. Yeah, I don't know if you can actually see me right now because can't see the screen, but. I think they could probably mostly see you. I don't know if they could see most of me. It's a mystery. I don't know if I explained this already, but the, the main point was we're trying to figure out if it was worth going for the dual coat thing because it gets a slightly brighter white or just paying for one ink that is ever so slightly not as bright. I think the single the single ink discharge thing is fine. It's kind of a trade-off because uh, with the discharge inks, it'll never crack because it's actually changing the color of the fabric. With the technique where they have a base coat and they put the ink on top, when those get old, they crack. So you're basically choosing between it eventually cracking or fading away. This is, this is an impossible place to turn. Yeah, why do I need to do Nice soup. Do look at my soup. The Democratic, uh, what's it called? Presidential debate is in half an hour and I can't watch it with no internet. It's high stakes in Vegas. <laughs> Cheryl Crow's about to do the national oh, anthem. We are like an hour into the debate so far and I only knew about Clinton and uh, Sanders. I hadn't heard of the other three. And so far, the other three haven't done anything to make themselves seem good. I still don't even really know their names. It seems to me at this point that the uh, Democratic race is just going to be between Sanders and Clinton. I guess it's not too late for Biden to get involved, but uh, there's just not... Not a lot of energy coming from the other three people that are involved in this debate right now. This is Lincoln Chafee, and he does a really good job of sounding completely different when he's reciting his rehearsed lines and when he's actually talking off the cuff. Neither of those performances is very satisfying. When he's reciting, he sounds pretty wooden. When he's not, he sounds like he doesn't really know what he's talking about. You've heard a lot of promises up here. You've heard a lot of rhetoric. This guy is Mr. Webb, and he spent most of the debate complaining about not being given as much time to talk as the other candidates. Um, and I'm, I can empathize with that, but he came across as being a little bit whiny, I think, when he was complaining about it. And what you heard tonight, Anderson, was a very, very, and all of you watching... This guy is O'Malley. He is certainly better spoken than the previous two people. I guess he, he seemed well-spoken, but ultimately kind of lifeless. But we have many, many serious problems. We should not be the country. This is Bernie Sanders. I worry a little bit that he, he might come across as just kind of a 
cranky old man just yelling about what's wrong. But I would say that if the election were held today, I would vote for him. I like what he's about more than the other candidates so far. Who tuned in tonight. I think what you did see... And of course, Hillary Clinton, who I would probably put second place for myself. My main complaint being that I, I wish she was more aggressive against the financial institutions or against the inequalities that currently exist between the upper, upper, upper class and the middle class. Right, Kat? Right. Who are you going to vote for, Kitty? All in all, the Democratic debate was much more substantive than the Republican debate. They actually talked about things. There wasn't very much uh, personal bickering or name-calling or whatever. I don't know why this is the case, but I think it's interesting that the Republican debate had, like, 37 people up on stage, and this one had, like, three. 